in honor of Women's History Month and also in honor of one of my favorite topics, with which is empowerment and financial wealth growth. I wanted to read you guys a story about Mary Ellen Pleasant. I'm going to read directly from the article um, really briefly and then give you a synopsis on why I'm so excited about her. But you know me, you're already going to know as soon as I start the story. So Mary Ellen Pleasant may not be a household name, but her story rivals that of any great American entrepreneur. In the 1800s, Pleasant became one of the first African-American female self-made millionaires in the U.S. despite the significant obstacles she faced as a black woman. Pleasant employed her inherent savvy, building a massive investment portfolio that was reportedly worth as much as $30 million at one time, a fortune that would make her close to a billionaire in today's value. So how did she do it? Well, before I do that, she put her fortune to use aiding abolitionist causes across the country while helping slaves escape, or I should say, while helping enslaved people escape through the Underground Railroad and settle down in free states. Pay attention to what I just said. So this woman grew an investment portfolio and by doing and in doing so, she took her wealth and assisted other people with attaining their freedom and their rights so that they could also do the same. Notice also I changed the wording in this article to enslaved people. I want to point that out and I want to encourage more people to start doing that. Some people in the academic community have already started to do so because a person cannot be a slave. They are a human no matter what. Every person is a human no matter what. Therefore, you can become enslaved if somebody puts you into that position because then it's temporary. It's not a permanent state or condition. All right, nevertheless, let's go ahead and skip ahead because I want to get to the part where we speak about how Mary Ellen got to her wealth. Born into um, enslavement um, in 1814 on a Georgia plantation, um, Pleasant was separated from her parents at a young age and was sent to work in Massachusetts where slavery was actually illegal. She was considered to be a domestic servant for a white family in that state. It was there that she learned to read and write and work in a shop, but she never had a formal education. Pleasant moved to San Francisco in 1852 during the gold rush. She went to California since California was entered as a free state. She was therefore continuing to be a considered a free person. She worked in California as a domestic servant and a chef for wealthy businessmen. And this is where she really put her savvy to work. So these white wealthy men would have been dismissive of any African American woman in their presence. And she took advantage of that. According to the New York Times, Pleasant used her proximity and her anonymity as a black woman in that space to pick up countless valuable investing tips by listening into her employer's conversations. In fact, one historian posits the possibility that Pleasant worked as a domestic servant specifically to pick up on investment advice and juicy, juicy gossip. I encourage you guys to look up Mary Ellen Pleasant and learn more about her her journey and her story because it is one that we can all learn from she took what is perceived as being and really was a an existence where she was limited she took that position and used it to her advantage and I want to encourage anybody out there listening to this story if you're a man or a woman no matter what kind of background you come from I want you to pay attention Mary Ellen Pleasant recognized the position that she was in she recognized that people were going to doubt her and she used it to her advantage because while she was in that space, she was listening just like it was a classroom and she learned all the tips and tricks that those white men at that time were using to gain wealth. She gained that wealth herself. She turned around and used that wealth to assist not only herself, but many, many others with settling in free states where they could also do the same. That's one of the reasons why I operate the way that I do. That's one of, that's why I associate myself with the circle that I do because we have a very similar goal, very similar mindset. Um, I want to also point out one of my other favorite female historical figures, Frances Godet, who is a figure here in New Orleans. I encourage you to also look her up because she did the same thing. She took advantage of 
working in a space where she was underestimated. She saved her money. She bought land. She provided education and housing to homeless children in the city of New Orleans. There are definitely people existing today who were descendants of the children that she assisted. So once again, both of these women coming from a situation where they were greatly oppressed and utilizing what they had access to in order to grow wealth and change the lives for other people. That is what you call community. That is what you call sustainability. That is how you have a revolution. And it didn't even have to involve any type of bloodshed. That's a revolution. When people hear revolution, they automatically assume negative. They assume conflict. They assume fighting. It can be done in other ways. Utilize what's accessible to you. And if you're listening to this and you have an interest in learning about investment, whether it be in real estate, annuities, stock market, whatever it is, hit me up. If I don't have the information, I'll put you in touch with someone who does. But when it comes to real estate, you know I got you. Whether it's commercial property or residential property, no matter what your goals are within it, remember that ownership, just like Mary Ellen Pleasant and Francis Godet, ownership is empowerment. Ownership is power.